Welcome to One Minute Theatre Reviews. I'm Paul Seven Lewis, and in this special edition, I'd like to talk about Taron Egerton withdrawing from the cast of Cock at the Ambassador's Theatre, leaving Jonathan Bailey as the one bona fide star name. And that's not to denigrate in any way the other cast members. Now, I haven't seen Mr Bailey's new co-star, Joel Harper Jackson, perform, but I do want to talk about whether I think the play will be worth seeing without Taron Egerton. I've also got some new production photos to show you, including one of Jonathan Bailey with his new co-star. And I'm not going to do that YouTuber trick of making you wait ten minutes so that I can boost my viewing figures. Here's the photo. OK, so if that's all you wanted to see, you can get on with the rest of your day. If you stick with me, I'd like to talk about the implications of Taron Egerton dropping out. Now you'll remember that when the production was first announced, there was a lot of excitement about these two big names from TV and film being paired in this play about a love triangle in which one half of a gay male couple finds himself attracted to a woman. Taron Egerton was still riding high on the success of the Rocket Man and Kingsman films, and Jonathan Bailey was, and is, a leading actor in Netflix's most successful English language series, Bridgerton. Even at a top price of £175, tickets were snapped up. And the first thing to say is, Joel Harper Jackson has had plenty of opportunities to step into Taron Egerton's role as M. Mr Egerton fainted at the very first performance and Mr Harper Jackson took over. Then a little way into the run, Mr Egerton succumbed to Covid and was off for ten days, during which time the understudy again stepped up. Finally, Mr Egerton dropped out for good citing personal reasons, which is a way of saying it's none of our business. He really showed what a great stage actor he is in this production of Cock, uh, where he played uh, the dominating, almost bullying lover who cracks up when faced with the loss of his partner. So, Joel Harper Jackson has taken over permanently, accompanied by some newly issued production photos of him. And all reports I've read have praised his performance. However, that's not the point. More than one of my viewers has questioned whether the £175 top ticket price can still be justified, given that only half the star billing is now in the show. I doubt this early play by Mike Bartlett would have been launched in the West End without these two stars. I don't know if the producers wanted to mount a production of Cock and then looked around for two big names, or whether they had Taron Egerton and Jonathan Bailey available and then searched for a suitable vehicle. But... Unlike, say, the new production of Cabaret, which was launched with uh, Eddie Redmayne and Jesse Buckley, but now has two much less well-known, but no doubt equally good, performers as the MC and Sally Bowles, the run of Cock was never intended to go beyond the availability of its two stars. The question is, knowing they were only, or now, only delivering half of what was promised, and I repeat, I'm not discrediting the quality of the other actors in any way, should the producers have cancelled the rest of the run and refunded the extremely high-priced tickets? I say, hesitantly, no. I mean, Taron Egerton's performance was terrific, but Jonathan Bailey is the linchpin of the play. Indecisive, torn between two lovers, shocked by feelings he didn't know he had, he carries the play forward and ultimately is the one who learns that he cannot simply be what other people want him to be. His indecision is comic and his anguish is moving. It's a masterful performance. And I also admit I underestimated the Bridgerton effect. I thought Taron Egerton would be the bigger draw because of his Hollywood films, but I know from YouTube analytics that my review of Cock, which incidentally has been seen more times than any other video I've posted, gained far more views from people who searched YouTube for Jonathan Bailey than for Taron Egerton, roughly seven times more. So while I absolutely sympathise with those who bought their tickets to see Mr Egerton, I believe the producers could have charged the same price for Jonathan Bailey alone from the start. And the rest of the cast is brilliant and the production is impressive. It's directed with pace by Marianne Elliott and has a clever reflective metal set that encircles the action and suggests the difficulty of breaking free of how people see you and how you see yourself. And it uses erotically charged choreography to symbolise the character's sexual feelings 
without the need for explicit sex or nudity, which I agree may disappoint some of Mr Bailey's fans. But having said that, £175 is still a lot to charge for any play. Now, I know these stars are paid significant sums of money to appear on stage, uh, and the producers have got to recoup it. I mean, tens of thousands of pounds a week. But I saw Ray Fiennes in Straight Line Crazy at the Bridge in London the other week, and the top price tickets were £95. And that's not a subsidised theatre. So I think all producers and theatres should be thinking about whether they want to keep theatre affordable. I'm Paul Seven Lewis. This has been a One Minute Theatre Reviews special feature. Please subscribe if you'd like to be the first to know about my future reviews. And thank you for watching.